In what has been a sort of incidental series of videos, wherein I've shifted from outright fact about Fire Emblem Engage to more opinion and theory craft, and drawn the ire of some folks in the community as a result, we've been talking about different ways to play that maybe don't quite line up with the generally accepted meta of Engage. And, well, today we're doing another one of those, because today we're talking about support slash backline Allier, and why I think that any other use of Allier is inefficient and maybe even wrong? Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know this is my full-time job. So if you find this video interesting, or at the very least thought-provoking and discussion-worthy, Leaving a like and subscribing would be very much appreciated. Thank you. The idea for this video comes from my initial maddening run, wherein I kind of had the thought, what if I made Allier into a support unit to make maximum use of his divinely inspiring personal skill that I think is quite strong? And so I made Allier into a support unit, and it was awesome. Like, Martial Master slash High Priest to Allier was an absolute boss MVP for that entire run. After experimenting with the previously mentioned support Martial Master Allier, I decided, well, let's see what other types of backline builds we can do, and in my current off-stream maddening run, I'm using Sage Allier also to great effect. Both of these builds have been serving me far better, even on maddening, than Divine Dragon Frontline Allier ever did in my hard mode run. We're going to talk about why I feel this is such a strong build, why I feel that using Allier as a combat unit really is kind of inefficient and unnecessary compared to the bonuses and benefits of having a support or backline Allier, and we'll go through some justification for those arguments. Allier is an average frontline combat unit. Her personal skill, Divinely Inspiring, and her class skill, Divine Spirit and Divine Dragon, don't help her in one-on-one -on -one combat in the slightest. And note, I'm saying her because I've primarily played female Allier. If you play male Allier, then by all means, but I will be referring to Allier as female throughout this video. The growths of Divine Dragon don't let Allier hit 50% strength growth, which really hurts on Maddening due to fixed growths. You could class change to other classes, yes, but you get plenty of really strong combat units who could fill the same roles. Boucheron, Chloe, Louis, Diamant, Kagetsu, Marin, Panette, the list goes on. And they all perform their roles just as well, if not better, than Allier, even if you class change her, while having less versatility than Allier does. They're really good at their jobs, but they start to struggle if you try to change them out of a niche that's similar to their base class, in a lot of cases. Whereas Allier can do a lot of things because she's the main character and is kind of designed to be customizable in that way. These combat units either have more spiky stats that complement their frontline abilities, personal skills that are more useful in direct combat, or personal classes with powerful skills that Allier literally just can't access. Let's talk about some of the early support units that are out there. Compared to the dearth of combat units that you get in Engage, support units are limited, especially early in the game. Jean, for example, wants to be in a completely different role to make the most of his growths with his personal skill, and while Fram is also a good martial master, Allier beats her in the relevant categories for growths, and Allier's personal skill is far more useful than Fram's Crimson Cheer, since Divinely Inspiring can help literally anyone on the team and is always online, while Crimson Cheer only helps Fram and Allier, and even then, only when they're adjacent. Also, Allier is force deployed on every map anyway, so having that slot be guaranteed to provide support frees up a slot for another, more focused combat unit. Since you want at least two healer slash support units in a deployment anyway, this eases up your planning significantly and locks in a core aspect of the team early in your run. Next up, Combat Flow. Allier's personal skill, Divinely Inspiring, encourages the grouping of allies around her for the boost to true damage and that damage reduction. Combined with the fact that Allier gets supports, and as such, support bonuses for herself and her allies, with every member of the army, this means you ideally want her to be at the center of your formation at all times. If you're trying to fight in melee, obviously this is going to be a problem because, well, you can't get your bonuses if the entire front half of the map is, like, enemies that you're trying to kill. 
Whereas if you're in a support class, you can actually sit yourself back in the middle of your formation. If you're on Martial Master, this is ideal, as you'll want to be in position for Chain Guard. If you're on High Priest or Sage, it'll happen naturally due to your ranged attacks with Tomes. And with all three classes, it frees you up to move about and heal slash debuff using staves. Let's look at a few scenarios here. So first things first, we're looking at my support alley air. This is from my cleared file from my maddening run that I did on stream, where we have ourselves a high priest alley air. This was martial master alley air for quite a while, but we landed in high priest. And I'm quite happy with this, being able to attack from range with magic, still use our staves, get all of our various bonuses and things like that. It's worked out quite well for us, I have to say. And uh, I gotta say, alley air's looking pretty fresh in that High Priest drip as well. It's a good look. And so what we can see here, I'm in this skirmish on uh, the map where you get Erica and a Frame's Emblem Ring, as well as Rosado and Gold Mary, that we are actually in a pretty good position to show off why I like this build. So we can push up here with Allier, and right off the bat, we have a number of enemies that are going to be trying to attack us. We can launch in with an Elfire. Of course, these are skirmish enemies, so their stats are pretty inflated. We're not doing a ton of damage, but that's fine. Now... We're going to be in a position where Allier can do a lot of good support stuff. You may have noticed when we first went to move, and you can see it here if I can adjust the camera a little bit, we have all of these different support levels with all of these various characters. Since we've pushed up first with Allier, we're going to be able to group our allies around him to be able to get the bonus from his Divinely Inspiring, and everyone's going to have boosted stats because of their support bonuses with him. So we're in a pretty good position to be able to push up and start taking these guys out. Jean, of course, doing Jean things. And we can probably go over here, have Jean dodge tank. Now Jean's going to be in a position where he's going to be taking less damage, even if he gets hit, which he probably won't be. Due to his own support bonuses from Lucina, he's getting massive avoid boosts from Allier. And, thanks to Allier's Divinely Inspiring, Jean was able to deal damage to this Paladin, put poison on it, that he otherwise would not have been able to. And again, that would be hard to do if we were, you know, attacking in melee range with Allier. It'd be harder to position for these types of attacks. Boucheron can come in and do the Boucheron thing and blow this guy up. Very nice. And then we can just continue to build the formation around Allier here, which really is just the exact position that you want to be in. There's so much versatility in terms of what you can actually pull off and make happen when you're using support Allier. It's a little bit harder to show in skirmishes, since skirmishes overall are pretty busted in their power levels. But, I mean, I don't think you can really argue with the fact that you can just maneuver into position to get all these extra stats. And then, on following turns, be able to heal. Again, if you look at what I've got on Allier right now, we've got all of our various array of staves, restore, rescue. We have the convoy available to us, so we can pull out literally whatever staff we want, whenever we want. And then with Veronica, you can guarantee you've got Allier in the middle of your formation anyway. You'll be able to heal everyone with Fortify Plus. Any damage that you take, you'll be able to then counter with Reprisal. There's just a lot going on here that I really, really like with Support Allier. Uh, that said, I think you kind of get the idea. Let's move over to my Sage Allier build that I have in my Maddening run I'm currently doing. So we'll be right back. And here we are in the Radiant Paralogue with my Sage Allier build. Uh, we're actually partway through the battle because I had created a bookmark so that I could pull up my previous Maddening run with my Support Allier build, so here we are. And largely, Sage Allier is doing the same thing. I currently only have Veronica on her because, well, I don't have all the emblems back yet and I probably would want to have something like Celica on this build, but I just don't have her right now, so I threw Veronica on because it works. And again, we largely have the same benefits here. Divinely Inspiring when we're attacking from range it'll be more easy to group allies around Allier to take advantage of this spell harmony is actually really nice because you can be in a lineup with your other tome users and get attack boosts and realistically i mean you can see Allier's stats quite well suited for sage you wouldn't know that she wasn't normally a magic user but she's actually quite well equipped and you can see that in how we just absolutely blow up this general here look at this We can see my Brave Bolting Selene build going off there as well. Very nice. And done. And that's just with a basic Wind plus three. I need to put a stronger Tome on Allier, but like... <laughs> as of right now, she's still doing 
damn fine. And all of the same rules apply. We're going to be in the middle of the formation. We have staff access. So we can heal and do support stuff, all that type of good nonsense. It's a lower staff rank than on something like High Priest, but it's enough to get the job done in most scenarios. And it just works, man. It just works for all the same reasons that High Priest would work. This works. And then, of course, you have Martial Master that you can throw into the mix as well, being able to chain guard, have good support, get really nice defensive stats. There's a lot going on here that I very much enjoy. So uh, just a couple of examples of why I do really like these ranged support backline alley air type builds. Next up, support emblems and the dragon subtype. Even if you want to leave Alier in Divine Dragon for whatever reason, whether you like the skill, or the art, or the weapon types, or even just don't want to spend the seals to change something else, I still advocate for a more support-focused strategy for one reason. Dragon boosts to emblem skills. You see, anyone can tank a bunch of damage, then counter with Ike and Great Aether, or override through an enemy line for massive damage with Sigurd. Some emblems are even better on specific types of units that aren't Dragon. After all, why get plus 5 range with Lin's Astrostorm via Allier when you can get plus 10 from a covert unit like Allcrist? However, your support emblems like Byleth, Karin, and Veronica get very strong bonuses that no other unit type can thanks to Dragon. For example, Byleth's Instruct and Goddess Dance both grant plus 3 to all of the affected unit's stats as opposed to boosting a single stat when used by a Dragon. Karin allows you to choose any Dragon Vein you want, keeping Allier versatile and able to deal with any combat scenario, on top of the fact that using a support unit to make a Vein feels way better than losing a turn of combat to do so with a Frontliner, while also giving you more range with Torrential Roar, and Veronica completely removes 3-star summons from the pool when using Summon Hero with a Dragon, while also granting plus 2 to Strength, Magic, Defense, and Res when using Contract on an ally. These are powerful abilities that you only have access to on Allier until you either recruit Veil near the endgame, or if you went through the Fels analog and have Nell and Rafal available as well. And really, the utility that you'll have at your disposal using Allier this way is truly noteworthy. Next up is the Mickey problem. I know you can get the Micaiah Emblem early, alright? Which can free up space for more combat units by letting anyone be a healer. Because of this, I can see some of you making the argument that backline Allier is less useful in the early game than I'm making her out to be. The issue with that argument is threefold. First and foremost, you don't have access to Mickey for that long. You get her in Chapter 6 and lose her in Chapter 11, so depending on if you wait to do John and Anna's paralogs until after you get Micaiah, you only have eh, five to seven chapters to use her. Since Micaiah is one of the most reliable ways to power level units in the early game, you're generally going to be focusing on using her for that during this time, rather than as a bog standard healer. Second, the majority of the time on Maddening, when you are using Micaiah for normal gameplay and not power leveling, you want her on an existing staff unit anyway. Your frontline units that can actually fight consistently are fairly limited early in the game, and you don't really want to be pulling anyone off the front to spend time doing emergency healing. When you've got squishy units like Jean, Fram, or Anna who are scared of the front line and have open ring slots who could be doing that healing while everyone else is fighting, why give Micaiah to like Yunaka or Boosh or Louis, right? Third, thanks to the timing of when you get Micaiah versus when you get your first master and second seals, the time in which you actually have both her and can get backline Allier online is actually even shorter. While you can get a Master Seal as early as pre-Chapter 7 by completing Anna's Paralog, you can't get a second seal until the start of Chapter 9 when you can buy three of them from the shop. So really, you have two whole chapters where Backline Allier and Micaiah overlap in the early game, which is really not much time at all. If anything, by building into Backline or Support Allier, you kind of have a built-in replacement for whoever your Micaiah bot was when you wind up losing access to Micaiah. It, it, honestly kind of works out better that way, in my personal opinion. Finally, I want to talk about the issue of Allier's unique weapon that you're able to use in Divine Dragon, and also Engage Plus as a little bit of a side topic. We'll hit Engage Plus last. Let's talk about the sword first. While discussing the idea of my support slash backline Allier preference, the question has come up. What about Allier's unique swords, right? The Liberation, which you basically start the game with, Filling your engage meter by one when you attack and defeat a foe in a single turn. Okay, not bad, not bad, kind of weak, yeah, but like, not bad, it's okay. 
And then the Wily Glands, Divine Dragon only, a powerful sword that can strike close or at range. All By all accounts, a powerful sword. But here's the issue. Here's the issue, right? To me, having an entire class that you are avoiding changing to something that could quite possibly, and in my opinion, is stronger for the character, simply because they have a weapon that might provide some slight boost, that they're the only ones that can wield it, it's not really worth it to me, right? Like, you're foregoing how much potential benefit for some extra engage every once in a while. Like, you can fill your engage meter so fast through so many different actions, just through, like, normal attacking and healing and stuff like that, let alone with engage puddles, or even if you wanted to use, like, Salika's favorite food to restore engage. There's a lot of ways to do it. So I feel like locking yourself into a class that can use swords, specifically to use the Liberation, is not necessarily worth it. If Alier was like the most standout busted sword wielder in the game, maybe, but that's not really the case. As far as the Wily Glands is concerned, this is where I really have to pump the brakes on people suggesting that you are missing out by not being able to use this sword because you're in a swordless class. The Wily Glands is cool. It's a good weapon. However, <laughs> you don't get it until the very end of the game. So to me, the idea of avoiding using a different class with Allier that can't use swords specifically because of the Wily Glands, or even the Wily Glands in conjunction with the Liberation, just is not worth it. You're going the whole game not using a class that is quite strong or a type of build that is quite strong specifically so you can use this weapon at the end of the game. It's a cool weapon, but to me, really not worth it. Now that said, if you really wanted to be able to use these weapons and use them like the Liberation throughout the game, be able to use the Wily Glands once you get it, the benefit is that they're both d rank swords. If you're in any class with Allier that can use swords, you can use these weapons. So for me, I would recommend doing Mage Knight Allier if you really want to be able to use these swords. That way, you can still get the backline gameplay that you kind of have going on like with my Sage build that we discussed earlier. You can still have your allies around you, be providing your support boost, have more characters that are being affected by divinely inspiring, all that type of good stuff. And then you can still use these swords when you want to. And thanks to Allier's good mixed offensive stats and generally pretty solid bases overall, it's not a terrible strategy. I don't know with fixed growths that you'll get quite as much offensive power as you would like as something that would be a little bit more specialized, like again, Sage, but you could do it. And maybe it's worth trying. If you've used Mage Knight in the past on Allier and you liked it, especially on Maddening, sound off in the comments. I would love to hear about it because this could work. I haven't tried it. And I try not to go off of things that I have not personally tried myself when recommending things to people, but it's a possibility. It's a possibility. And finally, as I mentioned before we started speaking about Allier's swords, I do want to touch on Engage Plus really quick because I could see the argument being made that, well, if you aren't using Allier as a combat unit, isn't that going to lessen the effectiveness of Engage Plus? But the thing is, not really. First of all, I generally don't have a very high opinion of Engage Plus. It's really something that I've kind of been thinking of doing a whole video about the discussion of, because like... <sighs> It, Engage Plus just bugs me for a few different reasons, but the main point to consider here is that everything that Engage Plus does for Allier works whether you're in a combat-focused melee class or a support class or a ranged magic class, whatever. Like, Dragon Blast and Bond Blast, they do a physical attack and a magical attack, so it's set up to work regardless of what type of character you have built Allier into. Your bond weapons you can still use to get their full effect. Your bond forger, granting hit and avoid plus 20 to the unit and allies within two spaces that are synced or engaged with an emblem. I mean, really, to me, that's even honestly better as a support unit, because again, you'll probably be in the middle of your formation, so more units will be around you and getting the bonus from bond forger. There's, there's a lot there with engage plus. And I don't think that you lose any versatility with it by using it with a support Allier, and in fact may gain versatility with it by using it with a support Allier. So I, I don't really think that Engage Plus could be used as an argument against this type of build philosophy for Allier either. And really, that's pretty much all that I have to say about it. This is a topic that I've been mulling over and brewing in my mind for quite a while. 
And I really do stand by the idea that Allier is better on the back line than on the front line. Her stats are extremely good for a magic unit or defensively for a support unit. I mean, she's got great defense and res when you're in something like Martial Master, making her hard to bring down. Her actual combat ability, you're not really losing anything by removing that when you have so many other really strong primary combat units. Like, again, when you've got characters out here like Louis and Kagetsu and Marin and Panette and Diamant and like all these really strong combat units. Do you really need Allier on the front line when you could be doing other stuff with her? I don't think that you do. So yeah, I mean, let me know your thoughts. I'm sure this is probably one that's going to incite some people and there's going to be a lot of discussion about what's better, what's worse. All I ask is that you keep it respectful. If you disagree with me, that's totally fine. If you see someone say something in the comments that you disagree with, also totally fine. It's all good. But uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what you guys think about all of this. So uh, with that said, though, I'm going to wrap this one up here. My name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.